I'm gonna tell you a story. I think this story goes along so good with everything can turn on a dime. I pastored in a distant state in the late 70s and early 80s, right before I went to Brownsville. I was 28 years old. And it was a big church, first church in the Assemblies of God to ever run a thousand in Sunday school. Pastor retired. Another pastor came in right after him and only stayed five months. And the church called me and asked me if I'd be willing to take the church. I was reluctant. I, I turned it down one time. They waited several years. They called me again and I went back. <clears throat> and I went for the first time and I pastored them. But it was, it was a very difficult time in my life. And um, I was young and I moved hundreds of miles away from what I was used to. I'm a southerner. I moved up into the Midwest, different cultures, different lifestyles, different mentalities, even spiritually speaking. So I went there and I gave it my best. And I was really, God was really with me. It really anointed me powerfully. And um, boy, I had some very difficult things happen that was beyond my control. And this congregation really had a fighting spirit and there were some key people in the church that was really fighters. And um, they were aggressive and they were very religious. So they began to criticize my ministry. They began to criticize my family. They began to criticize the way I run a church. And they began to send me anonymous letters so finally, Brenda had a physical disorder and I took her to the hospital in Louisville and um, I had to take her over there for surgery that Thursday morning and they were going to do surgery on her. And it was a pretty serious situation that she had. Uh, so, man... I had my hands full. I was fighting devils. I was fighting people. Now she's got a diagnosis where she had to have surgery. She had to have it quickly. I had to, my mother had to take care of the children. My mother had to help take care of me. I'm running a church. I'm fighting for everything I've got. And now she's got to have surgery. Nobody in the church offered to help. It was a big church. Nobody called about Brenda. I told the church to remember her in prayer. She's going to have to have surgery. Not one person called. Not any lady offered to come over and bring food. Nothing. So I went to church on that Wednesday night before she had to have surgery on Thursday. And I went in to preach. I could have easily taken off that Wednesday night and went on over to Louisville with her for the surgery the next morning, but I, no, I, went, I did my job. I went to church that night, and when I pulled up in the parking lot, there was uh, a man standing in the parking lot, one of my board members, and he said, could we see you tonight after service? I said, sure. So I went in and preached my heart out on Wednesday night. When I got through preaching, I went back to the conference room and met with them. They were all sitting there stone-faced. And when I walked in, I knew immediately that this was not going to be a good meeting. Well, the vice chairman of the board, I'm the chairman, you know, the pastor's always the chairman of the board and you have a vice chairman. The vice chairman of the board spoke up and he said, we want to say some things to you that we feel like you need to hear. I said, okay. They said, you're a misfit here and you don't fit in, and we don't like you. That's what he said. We don't like you. And so I'm sitting there, 28 years old, and um, he said, matter of fact, we have all talked, and we're going to cut your salary in half. So I said, okay. So they went on to the next person in the board meeting. And he was as vicious, if not more vicious, than him. 
said some horrible things. We don't like your mother. We don't like your wife. And we don't like your children. And my son had threw a snowball one Sunday night after church. Scott did. He threw a snowball and broke one of their stained glass windows, which was cheap anyway. <laughs> and they said, we don't like your children because you don't keep them under control. And boy, that's not the truth because men and brothers always keep our kids under control. And so I went to the next guy and he said some equally vicious things and right around the table, they all went. And then at the end, I just said, well, okay. I said, I've taken into consideration everything you've said. So I drove home to St. Wendell, Indiana that night where I lived. And I knew Brenda was going to have surgery the next day, so she was already asleep in the bed. Well, I got undressed, went to bed, lay there, put my hands behind my head, crossed my legs, and I just began to rehearse everything those guys said, and tears just began to roll out of my face. It was hurtful. I'm away from home. I'm away from my people that I understand and knows me and loves me. I'm in a strange place. I'm in a place where there's demons working alive. And those things have just attacked me and they attacked my confidence. They tried to attack my confidence, but they didn't succeed. So I still knew who I was. So I lay there and I began to think about all this stuff and man, the tear just running down the sides of my face. And I'm thinking about her going in for surgery tomorrow. Don't know what they're gonna find there. And I'm looking at the clock, it's 11.15. I'm looking back at the clock, it's 12.45. I'm looking back at the clock, it's 3.15. I still hadn't gone to sleep. Everything they said is just rehearsing in my head. And I just have hot tears running down my face. So I finally dozed off probably about four o'clock in the morning. And we had to get up at six, right about six o'clock. Well, I dozed off to sleep. And right at daybreak, I heard this. <laughs> and when we moved in that house, we didn't put any blinds upstairs in our bedroom because we had trees all around it. We just liked the nature. And so I didn't have any trees or blinds or curtains in my bedroom. And I heard the <laughs> And I thought, well, what's wrong with Brenda? <laughs> I never heard her make them noises before. <laughs> Maybe the surgery's gonna do her good, you know. And so I heard it again, you know, it quit and I heard it again. <laughs> and I leaned up on my elbow and I looked over at her and she was just sound asleep. And I looked up at the window and it was just turning daylight outside and there was a snow white dove at my window. And he had his little claws pinned on to the wood part of the window pane and he was beating his wings against the window like that looking in the bedroom. <laughs> you know? He's got that little head going just looking in the bedroom. He was eavesdropping, he was, he was, voy he was a voyeur. He was, that's what he was. <laughs> looking right in the bedroom, just right in the bedroom at us. And as soon as I saw that dove, I said, it's over. Nothing had changed. Everything they said a few hours before still stood. I still remembered everything they said, but as soon as I saw that dove, it was like the Lord said, I'm gonna turn this thing on a dime. It's not gonna continue. It will not continue. As soon as I saw the dove, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me was, it's gonna be okay. Go ahead and get her the surgery. Everything's going to be all right. And then after I saw the dove and I assimilated that and I started rejoicing, I said, woman, get up. Let's go get some surgery, praise God. Come on, woman. Get up, get that self-dress. Come on, get out of here. So I drove her over to New Orleans, I mean to uh, Louisville. She got surgery. I went back to church on Sunday. Nobody ever called to check on Brenda. Nobody sent flowers. No concern whatsoever. I went in the church on Sunday morning. I preached like the house is on fire. I preached good. Come back that Wednesday night, preached great. 
Did good, did my job. In the spite of being hated, in spite of being mocked, in spite of being ridiculed and humiliated, I preached Sunday, Wednesday, the next Sunday, the next 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 Wednesday. I pulled in the parking lot after about two months, and there was a board member standing in my parking lot, parking place. When I pulled up, he said, could we see you at the service tonight? And my first thought was, my mama didn't raise no food. <laughs> so I said, yeah, okay. So I got through preaching that Wednesday night, went back to the conference room just like I did two months before. I walked in, and when I walked in, there were tears. And the vice chairman of the board spoke up and he said, Brother Kilpatrick, we owe you an apology. And I didn't say a word. And he said, you know what? He said, this church has been through a lot before you ever got here. And I think because you were young, we thought that we could sort of just spew on you what we was trying to say about the other ones that was here before you. I know it's no excuse, but would you please forgive us? And they went around the table, and every one of those men that said all those bad things, every one of them was crying, and said, would you please forgive us? And when it came back around to me, I said, I forgive all of you. I forgive you totally. And then the chairman of the board said, we want to restore your salary. I said, yay. <laughs> All right. I went home. See, I didn't tell Brenda about that. So I didn't tell her when all that stuff was happening. I didn't want to worry her before her surgery. So I went home that night. Went to bed, went sound asleep. Early the next morning, right at daybreak. <laughs> I knew before I looked out what it was. That dove came twice. It came the morning after they broke my heart, and it came back the morning after they restored my heart. So, here's, here's what I want to say to all of you tonight, today. When I saw that dove, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is, I've already turned this thing. You just can't see it yet. I've already turned it. So when I saw that dove, everything was done. I still had the enemies. They still meant what they said. But it was over right then. And so what I want to tell you today as I get ready to close, and I want to give you these prophetic words. What I want to tell you today is this. <clears throat> God will send you signs when something is really bad, God's going to send you a sign. This thing's already turning. You just haven't seen it yet. Does that make sense? Those of you that's watching me by live streaming, I promise you that something is already happening in your situation where this thing is turning already and you just can't, you hadn't had the optics to see yet exactly what God's doing, but it's already begun to turn. I have 10 prophetic words that I want to share. And these are some of the things that's about to change in some of your lives. The Lord says, it's going to be a quick turnaround. The turnaround probably won't even make much sense, except God has melted the heart of someone very close to you. And as a matter of fact, he has been in the process of melting that heart for a long time but it came across as being hard-hearted, but it was melting all the time. The way you have known them and the way they have behaved, Holy Spirit said it's gonna be like they've had a spiritual heart transplant. They're gonna have a complete turnaround and a complete change towards you. Number two, just like the widow that was at the point of utter desperation in regard to the debt her husband had incurred, her sons were about to be taken away and auctioned off. And when she put that oil in the pan, 
to fix that little cake for Elijah. Everything turned at that moment when she put that oil in that little pan to use her last meal to cook the man of God a cake first. When she put that oil in the pan, everything turned right then and she couldn't even see it. But that act of obedience caused everything to turn right then. It just hadn't manifested yet. So I say to you, there's some of you right now, you've done what God has told you to do and this thing turned weeks ago and months ago, it just hadn't manifested yet, but you're about to see the manifestation of it. And concerning this woman, when she put that oil in the pan, before nightfall came, a miracle provision of oil took place and she didn't have enough containers to contain the oil. And so that night she had money in the bank, whereas that morning she was losing everything, including her children. But that night she had money in the bank, which was oil in those jars. And it happened suddenly within 12 hours. God is rising up and he's going to restore the debt that someone else made and left you responsible for. This woman's husband was part of the school of the prophets and whenever he died, he left her holding the debt, even to the point of losing her own children. And there's someone that you've been left holding a debt that you didn't make credit cards and other things. And the Lord says, I'm going to turn and I'm gonna turn this thing for you and I'm gonna see that things change because your faith has been rattled until you heard this message today. And the Lord said, be assured, it's going to turn for you quickly. Number three, when God gets ready to move, he does not need a lot of room to turn things around. He can turn things so quickly it will be difficult to realize that things have changed so fast, especially with the demotion of someone that has made your life miserable. God is about to demote somebody that's in your life and they're not gonna be there much longer. And the person that's coming to replace them is gonna be a wonderful friend. Number four, I see court issues and I see insurance issues. And the Lord said he's gonna let this be resolved and it's gonna be resolved. It's been dragging out a long time, but he's gonna let it turn in the favor of the innocent. Before the gavel comes down, God said it will be over. It will be settled out of court. Number five, I see sickness and suffering lifting off of a loved one that's been afflicted for a long, long time. It's gonna happen suddenly and they're gonna get up, as we saw in that vision, that dream that the Lord gave me, they're gonna get up suddenly and they're gonna be restored to health. Number six, I am seeing you coming out from under the hand of tyranny and intimidation and threats. When the blood was applied to the doorpost in the days of Israel while they were in Egypt, everything began to turn from that moment when they applied the blood to the doorpost. The waters of the Red Sea we're already receiving the command from God to part as soon as that blood hit those doorposts. The Red Sea was already beginning to get prepared to part as soon as they obeyed God and put that blood on the doorpost and on the lentils. And it was all gonna happen suddenly. Number seven, I see that a very heart-wrenching diagnosis spoken over a family member will be revoked and a way will be made, or should I say, a discovery will be discovered, and tears of grief and heartbreak will quickly turn to tears of joy. Number eight, I see flashes of lightning, and I hear peals of thunder, breaking the spiritual drought that has almost paralyzed saints as they have been interceding and believing God for revival for their ministries and their churches groups and fellowships and prayer groups shall experience rain, even the latter rain of the Holy Ghost soon, and it will be a suddenly, a refreshing rain on parts ground. I smell rain even as I'm reading this. Somebody shout amen. 
As soon as David took his brother's lunch in his hands and began the journey to get that lunch to those brothers, Goliath was already history. Things were turning on a dime. Goliath's heart was still beating, but in God's mind, he was already dead. As soon as David received the lunch from his father to take to his brothers, Goliath was already a dead man. I wanna say this to you. Already while you're sitting here and you're loosing your faith, things have started to change already while you're loosing your faith. God said, the giant that stands in your way, your way of progress, that stands in the way of things that have blocked your mind and hindered your mind and worried your mind, taxed your mind, that giant is staggering as I'm reading this that giant is gonna fall, and he's gonna fall quickly. When the giant falls, every other threat that stood with Goliath will run in fear and disbelief. And you'll wonder, where are the enemies? Where are my enemies? Where are my threats? They're gonna disappear so quickly, you'll have to look for them. Number 10. You've been preparing and praying and laying aside what you can to make something happen. You desperately desire for this thing to happen, but the Holy Spirit's gonna turn this thing quickly because he's going to link you with a trustworthy golden connection. That individual that God's gonna link you with is gonna make things happen for you in such a way in an instant that you couldn't make happen in a lifetime. This is a Ruth and Boaz moment. You won't have to strain your mind to figure it out. It's gonna happen very quickly. Here's what I wanna leave with you today. Sometimes things may look like they're on a set course and it's gonna develop on that set course and that's the way it's always gonna be. Not so. Because what God's gonna do is he's gonna turn this thing for his glory. And already, already, while I'm standing here talking about this, I knew how it was gonna be when I got up here today and started talking about this, because it's gonna get your wheels spinning. And I'm gonna say one thing that's gonna kick off something else in you. I can't specifically talk about everybody's specific situation, but when I've been talking about certain things, it's kicked off certain thoughts in you. But I just wanna tell you this, I want you to leave here with the confidence today, 2023, gonna to be a different year. God bless you.